In this video, you'll learn how to easily connect a database to N8N. I'll teach you how to spin up the database, add the credentials to N8N, and avoid certificate authority errors that you might have seen if you already tried this on your own. We'll use this database to store magic keys that we use in our N8N workflow for authentication. This is lesson eight in our N8N crash course. If you're new to the series, this video will be self-contained, so you don't need to watch any of the other lessons. But if you wanna learn more about using N8N or you just want more context, then feel free to check out the whole crash course. All right, let's jump in. So in our last video, we saw how to generate these magic links that we're gonna to send to users so they can authenticate. But now we need to store them in a database so they can be retrieved by our authentication workflow. So let's set that up. We're gonna make the database in DigitalOcean. So log into DigitalOcean, click databases, and then click create database. I'll add a promo code in the description so that the first 50 people who use it can get some free credits to try this out for free. We're gonna use Postgres and you can leave all the other options as they are, except data center. You can choose a data center that's closer to you or the server on which you are running N8N. We're gonna name this cluster N8N inquiry agent DB, and then I'm gonna add it to my very cool project. And now we are gonna create the database cluster. So now we can see the database is spinning up. And while we're waiting for that to finish, let's get psql installed. psql is a CLI tool that we're gonna to use to interact with our database and set up the tables and users. You can go to the Postgres website to install psql for your system. Now, we don't need to actually run Postgres on our system, we just need to interact with a remote database. So you just need to install psql. If you wanna run the database locally, then make sure to install the full version of Postgres. If you are on Mac and using Homebrew, you can just do brew install libpq and that will install psql. Now you need to add it to your path. So you can run this command if you are on Apple Silicon. Otherwise, if you're on an Intel machine, then you're gonna use this command. Back in the DigitalOcean dashboard, I see my database is ready. So first things first, we're gonna authorize specific inbound connections. So this means that only authorized machines can access the database and even make requests to it. This is a good idea to do. So we're gonna to go to settings, and we're gonna to go to trusted sources. And I'm gonna add my current IP address. So this is my current computer that I'm on right now. We're gonna need this so psql will work. And then I'm also going to add the droplet on which my N8N instance is running. Because of course, remember, N8N needs to be able to communicate with the database. So I'll go ahead and hit save. And now we can go to our connection details. So now we're gonna to connect to the database. So type in psql and then double quotes, and you're gonna do postgres colon slash slash and then you're gonna copy do admin, which is the admin user. You're gonna do colon, and then copy the admin password and paste that in. And then you're gonna do at the host. Paste that in, another colon, and uh, 25060, so that's the port. And then we're gonna copy the database name and we're gonna do slash database name, default DB in this case. And then finally, we're gonna do question mark SSL mode equals require, and then close it off with a double quote. The SSL mode just ensures that everything is encrypted in transit. So now we are logged into our database and we are going to create our table. So here we're gonna create our table auth tokens. We're gonna to have an ID column and that's an integer and it will be generated always as identity and it's gonna be the primary key. So this is just an auto incrementing ID. Then we're gonna have a token, so that's gonna be a 255 character string. It's not gonna be null and it's going to be unique. Additionally, we're gonna log the inquiry ID, the user email and an expiry time. All of those are gonna be not null. So those are gonna be input when we uh, save the token. And then we're gonna have a used at timestamp. So this is gonna be the time that the token was used and then resume URL. So this is gonna be the URL to call from our authentication workflow to resume uh, the execution of the main execution loop. So go ahead and type all this in and then hit enter. I'll also add all these commands to the GitHub so you can just copy and paste them. So now our table has been created. And since we use this unique parameter, uh, an index will automatically be created on this token column. So since we're gonna be looking up tokens by their token and not by their ID, this could get really slow if we don't have an index built on top of the tokens. So as I said, since we have unique here, this will automatically be built, but uh, otherwise we would have to do something like create an index on the auth tokens uh, table token column. So that's just something good to keep in mind and be aware of as we're doing this. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna create an N8N user. So go to users and databases and just add a new user N8N. This is so that we don't have to give admin permissions to our N8N instance. So you don't wanna give an application admin access even if you're running it because if that application is compromised, then people are gonna have access to your database. 
So we're gonna to wanna to use a separate user that has access just to the table uh, that we need. So I'm gonna go back to my terminal and then grant all permissions on the auth token table to the N8N user. So all is shorthand for select, insert, delete, etc. So we're gonna grant permissions to the N8N user. Next, since the ID is an identity column, uh, those will automatically be generated with a sequence. So we actually need to give the N8N user access to that sequence as well, or though there will be errors when we try to create records. So do select PG get serial sequence and then uh, the auth tokens table, we're gonna get that of the ID. So now we have to grant permissions on this sequence to the N8N user. We're gonna do that with grant usage on sequence and then the name to N8N. And in the future for any tables we create, we're gonna have to give them to the N8N user. So if we wanna just preemptively do that, you can enter these lines to alter the default privileges and that will grant all tables and all sequences to the N8N user. So now we have our N8N user all set up so you can type in exit here. So now our N8N user is set up, our database has the appropriate table and we need to connect it to N8N. When you try and connect, you will likely get a certificate error. This happens because your N8N instance doesn't recognize the authority that issued the database's TLS certificate. So to fix this, we need to provide the certificate authority certificate to N8N and add it as a trusted certificate. So go to your DigitalOcean dashboard and go to the database and scroll down to download CA certificate. So the way you're gonna add it is going to depend on your method. So in my N8N instance was deployed using uh, DigitalOcean's one-click deploy, and that's basically just Docker Compose. So I'll show you how to do it here. So first I need to SSH into the droplet. Now I'm gonna CD into this folder and I'm gonna make the certs directory. So now if I list it out, we can see the certs directory has been created. Now I'm gonna do uh, nano docker compose.yaml to edit the docker compose file. So you're gonna go down to the N8N service and you're gonna add two things. First, you're going to add to your environment variables node extra CA certs, and that will be Etsy SSL certs uh, CA certificates.crt. And then you're gonna go to your volumes and map your certs folder to your custom certificates. Then you are going to go to wherever your certificate was downloaded. I have it here in my uh, downloads folder. And then you're gonna secure copy the CA certificate and you're gonna put that in the certs directory you just created. So user at your server, and then you're gonna go uh, opt N8N docker caddy certs CA certificate dot cert. And you can use that exact path if you did uh, DigitalOcean's one click deploy. Now we're gonna SSH back into our server and we are just gonna make sure that the certificate is there and it looks good. So finally, we're gonna do Docker compose down and then do Docker compose up uh, detached and that's gonna start up the services. And now we need to change the permissions on that file. So do docker exec dash dash user root, user root, and then n8n docker caddy. So that's the compose file. And then uh, we're gonna go into our n8n. So this is n8n dash one instead of caddy dash one. And then we're gonna change ownership recursively. We're gonna do a thousand for the user and group and then opt slash custom certificates. So you're gonna replace this with your container name if you're not doing one-click deploy. Go back to N8N and add in a Postgres node. So we are going to be inserting a row into a table and uh, now you need to add your credentials. So I'm gonna create a new credential. The host, again, we're gonna copy from uh, the DigitalOcean dashboard here. So we're gonna copy this. We are going to use the default DB. The user is going to be N8N and we're going to copy that uh, user's password. Now make sure to require SSL and then again specify the port. So we're going to hit save and we see the connection was tested successfully. So now we're inserting into our database and we're going to choose the auth tokens table and it says we can map each column manually. So we can take the uh, token, we can take the inquiry ID, so that uh, is just the execution ID. Uh, so we'll add that in here the user email, so we're gonna go up to the switch statement here and add the email. And then for expires at, we're gonna do an expression and it's going to be uh, now and then plus uh, minutes 15. So 15 minutes from now, this code will expire. Use that, we're gonna leave empty and then the resume URL, we are going to put in uh, this execution uh, resume URL. So now we're gonna execute this step and we have now inserted this token into the database. Now we are going to have to create our authentication workflow. So go over to this plus sign and click uh, add workflow and we're gonna call it 
inquiry agent auth workflow. And we are going to start this with a webhook call. And we are going to copy this test URL now. And we're gonna go back to our inquiry agent. So I open the auth flow and the inquiry agent in two separate tabs here. We're going to start a new execution. So we see this is all executing. Now we see this is the second token that's been inserted into our database. So we just ran a new execution, so we have a new token. So now we're gonna add a set field. We're going to call this uh, get auth workflow webhook URL. And we are just gonna add this auth URL as a parameter. So again, this is to keep our workflow dry. Don't repeat yourself. This is so we're not hard coding this uh, URL in anywhere. So if we hard code this URL into like an email uh, template or something, and this URL changes, like if we delete that node or we have to migrate to a different authentication workflow, um, then that link is no longer gonna be valid. So this is a way to just set it uh, in a place that's obvious and uh, is like a single point of reference. So now we can email this to our user. So we're gonna add this email magic link node. Uh, and you can check our previous video if you wanna see how to set up uh, like Gmail for this. We're sending it to our user. We are adding the subject action needed, authenticate your digital ocean inquiry. And then we give them a summary of the question they asked. And then we're going to add in the information we need. So we're going to add in the auth URL. And then we are going to add in the token. So we're gonna add he, this here and we're going to make sure it's the same exact one that was inserted in the database just in case someone changes something in the future that causes some sort of break so we want to make sure we're sending the exact one that was put in the uh database so now we can execute this step and if i go to my gmail i can see that this link was sent so if i click on this we see that the webhook is not registered so we have to go into our auth workflow and click execute workflow and now this is waiting for us to call the test url so now we can go back and click the link. And if you watch quickly, you could see the icon change here from like a loading to a, a play. And we see the workflow is started. So if we go to executions, we can see that this was just executed. And if I go in here, I can see all of the information that was sent. So we can see the token is in our query parameters. We're gonna build out that authentication workflow and see how to handle the results in the next video. So keep watching to learn how to build it.